in New York City, in order to stand out, you've got to be big and impressive. The Hellgate Bridge fits the bill. It carries train traffic over the Hellgate section of the East River, known for its strong current. Before the bridge, if you wanted to get from one side to the other, you faced either an incredibly long roundabout land trip or the cumbersome option of floating your train cars across the water on barges. The important aspect of this bridge is that it permitted traffic from the south and the southwest to access New England. And prior to the building of the bridge, uh, most traffic was car floated across the harbor, which is expensive and weather dependent. Uh, this was the first link between, let's say, Washington and Boston. And uh, it was built just after the building of Penn Station and the tunnels under the, the Hudson River and the East River and cut the travel time between Washington and Boston by a good four hours. When it opened in 1917, it was the largest steel arch bridge in the world. 12 stories above the water, spanning nearly 1,000 feet between twin towers. Its sheer size and graceful arch made it an engineering landmark. Designed by Gustav Lindenthal, it cemented his reputation as one of the world's premier bridge builders. It was uh, designed for extremely heavy loads. Uh, it only has two tracks on it now, but it was originally designed for four railroad tracks and for the later addition of a second deck with a roadway and, and a streetcar line, which was never built. So it's a very, very heavy, enormous bridge. So from an engineering point of view, it's really quite a, a marvelous piece of work. Some of the pieces of the bridge weighed as much as 250 tons. and. Uh, the parts that had to be erected in the arch, uh, some of those I think were as much as 180 tons. It had to be, uh, usually they were lifted off of barges in the river and put in place in the bridge. In the mid-1970s, when rail service in this region of the country was suffering, Amtrak inherited the bridge. In the 1990s, the dingy dark brown rust color was covered with a vibrant deep red. The granite-faced towers were scrubbed and the bridge once again started to look like a respectable landmark. Joe Greenstein is a railroad writer and photographer, as well as a New York native, who thinks the Hellgate is as impressive as any New York runway fashion model. I think that this, the scope of the bridge is just startling. It's, it's just such a beautiful structure, especially since it's been painted. Uh, the red has really brought the bridge alive. One aspect is the view that it gives of the city. Most of the rail approaches into the city just don't give you a sense of what, what New York is like. Uh, the New York Central into Grand Central Station goes through some pretty depressed areas, you know, factories and, and junkyards and tenements. And the Pennsylvania goes into a tunnel and you hardly get a glimpse of the city at all. But from up on the Hellgate, you get a magnificent view of the skyline. And it really is a gateway. It really gives you a sense of Gotham, of the metropolis that you're approaching. It is most impressive. Though some freight is carried over the Hellgate, most of the traffic is made up of Amtrak passenger trains. Some use the electrified catenary, which is still in place. Whether looking at the Hellgate from a beautiful park or from the rooftop of a New York residence, it's easy to see why rail fans consider this a masterpiece. It offers visitors a majestic view as their trains come rolling into the Big Apple. And with the growing push for more high-speed rail service here, the glory days of the Hellgate may be yet to come. Not too long after the Hellgate Bridge opened, the Lionel Model Train Company was so impressed with it, they made a model of the bridge. Well, that's it for this episode. Thanks for being with us, and please join us next time for more Tracks Ahead. <laughs>